everyone. In today's video, I'm answering an email that I got from a Dr. Hussein, who says that um, he's having some trouble with the daily schedule for studying for step one. So um, he's trying to follow the four month schedule that I laid out um, in the previous video. And he is kind of worried about if he's gonna be able to complete everything on time. So stay tuned to know what a daily schedule should look like. Well, Hussein, those are um, very good questions, but um, I don't think you're doing anything very wrong. If you feel like your concepts aren't clear, then you need to go back to Kaplan. He says that he has four months left, so I would say that you have plenty of time for improvement. But um, if you are nowhere near what your goal is, then definitely the four-month program of doing Kaplan first is right for you. However, if you feel your basics are already concrete and you just um, are not able to answer the questions because, like you were saying, you don't know the vignettes very well, then you just need to do a lot of questions. So um, some people do you world two times, three times, over and over again. I don't think that this is the most helpful thing because eventually you're going to remember the questions if you do them three to four times, you know, the entire set all over again. So I don't uh, recommend doing that, but there are some people who find it to be um, helpful. So you might want to try that. Also, um, doing eight hours a day is pretty normal. Um, that is a normal, dedicated, step one studying program. Some people I know um, have stated that they did 14 hours a day. So eight to 14 hours is um, it's pretty much normal. If you can't put in at least eight hours a day uh, for your dedicated time, maybe you're working, then it's definitely going to take you just longer, more months to study, right? Um, more than four months maybe. That's why some people take 12 months to study for this exam. So you really have to plan accordingly. However, um, I do think that four months is enough if you um, sit there and maybe put in a couple more hours a day to get through what you need to get through and you know keep a good schedule. So what I'll do is I'll put a PDF down below for a very, you know, just a sample, not something you have to follow, but probably something that I followed. And you can see um, how your daily schedule would look. So in a sample daily schedule, um, basically you would start out with whatever materials you want to learn that day. So your first day and plus the videos that you're going to be watching, um, the lectures from either Kaplan, DIT, or whatever you choose, right? So you'll start out with that, uh, you'll watch a certain subject, right? Especially in the first month, you'll watch a certain subject, and then right after that, after you watch the video, you'll do questions. And you'll do them subject-wise exactly. So if you watched a physiology video, you would do physiology questions. What happens though is that this takes, this sounds really easy, but it actually takes up your entire day. Because in the morning, you'll start out doing all these lectures and then you'll start, you'll do one set of questions. And if you're doing it properly, that one set of questions, when you're reading the explanations um, along that go with the questions, it will take you the entire day. You might get through two blocks of questions and maybe like three, four videos at the most. And the rest of the time, you'll probably going, be going through your first day, finding out why you got those questions wrong and trying to um, watch YouTube videos if the lectures aren't enough to explain those uh, concepts to you. Another thing that Hussein pointed out is that he actually did Biochem Kaplan videos and then he tried to do the U World um, question sets right after that. Basically what he's saying is that he did U World uh, right after Kaplan and then he was like, the questions weren't even by him, right? So that's what happens. That's why I don't recommend doing uh, U World questions right from the start. I think that if you need to build your um, knowledge foundation from the beginning, you need to be doing Kaplan with Kaplan questions. And Kaplan questions are nitpicky, they're detailed, 
Um, some people might say they're useless, but I don't think so. Um, they might be a little nitpicky, but that just makes you read more in detail and it makes you retain at least the basic stuff, right? If you go to read in detail, at least when you come out of it, you might not remember the details, but you'll remember the broader concept of what you were trying to learn. So I think Kaplan is really important for that. If your trouble, however, is just with uh, recognizing clinical vignettes and um, kind of making the connection between two subjects, like um, if you have, if you know everything about biochem, but then you don't know its relation between CBS or RS uh, vignettes, then what you need to do is do a lot of new world questions because those are the most like the exam and they are the most layered of all questions. So, you know, Kaplan is for your basic foundation, um, for the basic subjects, just to know the material. Then USMLE RX, that question bank, is there to help you memorize first aid. That also helps with these connections. Um, and if you look in the rapid review of first aid, you know, those kinds of questions are there in RX. So that's what that's good for. But then UWorld is really the question bank that you should be using if you need help with these clinical vignettes and identifying the disease and making a connection with some other subject. If you need help with that, then keep doing your world questions over and over again. Make sure you are reading all the explanations and annotating well. So how do you annotate? Say you're looking at a your world question and um, you read through the explanation. Then you went back to your first aid and you read the little paragraph in first aid. Then you notice that there is a lot in the your world explanation that is not in your first aid. And so I would just bullet point right next to the area in first aid that talks about that topic and just add whatever information is not already there. If you feel you already know that topic um, really, really well and you don't ever need to review it, um, I doubt there are many uh, topics like that, but if there are, then obviously don't write it down if you th feel it's not necessary. But there are a lot of topics in New World that are just not given in first aid sometimes because New World is usually more up to date than first aid. So there are some topics you will have to fill in. They won't even be in your first aid, so you'll have to use, you know, there's a notes part in your first aid. You can write down those new topics there. So the reason that you have your first aid hole punched is so that you can add more papers to it, right? So um, also in your world, if there's an explanation that you really love but you cannot um, fit in your first aid, then what you can do is you can type it up in the notes section on your world. Um, if you notice, there's a little icon with a pencil and a paper, I believe it is. Um, and you can click on it and it'll give you a little notes area. You can't copy and paste, but you can type out what you need and later on the notes can be printed. So you can just add those printed pages to your first aid. Just hole punch everything and put it in. That way in your last week, right before the actual, you know, D-Day, your exam, you can take out these pages one by one and just go through them line by line and make sure you know all of the concepts. Either you can do that or you might go through your flashcards. Um, it's a very good idea to make flashcards out of all of the U World explanations. If that is helpful, then you can do that instead of annotating into your first aid. Or, you know, I did both. Whatever uh, works for you, you should do that. Okay, you guys, I hope that was helpful. So now you know how to annotate and you will have the daily schedule when you just look below this video. Uh, it should be there. So if you have any other questions or if you felt that I didn't explain something uh, carefully enough, then let me know. You can always email me at studentdoctorsunite at gmail.com or you can comment below. That's usually faster, I'll get back to you. Um, as always, please subscribe and definitely um, like this video for me. Thank you.